welcome back. I am Largo and today we are checking out another SCP video. Today is going to be SCP-261, the pan-dimensional vending machine. This one comes off of the back of the last video we did, which was the uh, coffee machine. A lot of you guys brought this one up, SCP-261, and said, hey, this is very similar to the coffee machine, but a little bit different. Why don't you go ahead and check it out? So here we are with SCP-261, the pan-dimensional vending machine. This was obviously a comment or suggestion, so thank you very much for that. Uh, let's see how this one plays out. Feeling hungry? Maybe you could go for a snack right about now. I or am a hungry, nice actually. Refreshing <laughs> pan of your favorite soda. Starving. Perhaps if you've got some change burning a hole in your pocket, a nearby vending machine would be a good choice. And trust us, there's no vending machine like this one. SCP-261 will give you a treat that's out of this world, or rather, out of this dimension. Okay. That's how this safe class anomaly earned its incredibly accurate name, the Interdimensional Vending Machine. It was first discovered in a dark alley in Yokohama, Japan. Japan is a place where you can find a number of strange okay. and sur- That makes sense, yeah. Japan is well known for having uh, almost anything in vending machines. They have entire rows, entire alleys filled with vending machines. Prizing things in vending machines but nothing quite like this. The Foundation was first alerted to its presence after one of their web trawlers noticed some interesting chatter on Japanese online message boards about a magic vending machine. To these Japanese forum users, it sounded like a fanciful urban legend, a vending machine where you could get something truly fantastical if you have the yen to spare. But upon thorough investigation, field agents of the SCP Foundation discovered that the machine was no legend and brought it into containment. It's the kind of thing you wouldn't look twice at. An utterly generic black vending machine with no viewing window and a handwritten sign in Japanese that reads, out of order. But okay. what the vending machine looks like isn't nearly as interesting as what it's capable of. When you insert your money into the machine, and it's important to note that it only accepts Japanese yen, the machine hmm. will dispense some kind of snack food or drink item. However, over time, the more the machine is used in a single day, the more bizarre the items it spits out will become. Foundation researchers have attempted to figure out how the machine works, but their task has been incredibly difficult so far. It doesn't appear to contain any snacks, and it doesn't seem to be made of any anomalous parts. Moreover, the machine simply won't work when the front panel is opened, or when any surveillance equipment is placed inside. Okay, so it's kind of interesting that they're actually able to open it up. I had assumed that it would probably be probably be this box that they just can't open and they don't can't look inside of it and don't understand how it works. But uh, apparently they can crack that bad boy open and take a look at the insides and there's nothing anomalous about it. At least uh, it seems that way physically doesn't seem to be made out of anomalous materials either and only accepts Japanese yen, so only ex accepts a very specific type of uh, currency. Interesting. I wonder how the, uh, I mean, maybe it was made by some kind of Japanese manufacturer or uh, a Japanese individual, maybe? And that's why it only accepts Japanese yen. No indication of, like on the coffee machine, you could, it had a keyboard, you could punch in and type what you wanted, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. It seems a little bit more randomized. So let's, let's keep going. In other words, it's pretty much impossible to look this gift horse in the mouth. Strangely, the machine is also capable of working without power. Oh, Though, when okay. unpowered, the vended products are likely to become stranger much faster. But let's be honest here. You're not here for Vending Machine Mechanics 101. You want to hear about all the weird stuff that SCP-261 dispenses. Yeah, and let me frankly, hear frankly, we're with you on that one. Lucky for all of us, this is one of the anomalies that the Foundation has truly extensive test records on, providing us with a highlight reel of some of the strangest, wildest, and downright most interesting snacks and drinks straight out of another dimension. Bon Appetit. Let's start off nice and easy with some of the snacks and drinks that are not only edible, but also sound like they'd actually be pretty tasty. Like Pepsi Dragon Twist, a bottle of Pepsi soda with English packaging that tastes like dragon fruit. PepsiCo does not produce such a product, but huh. honestly, we wish they did. Same for Dark Side Cola, dragon fruit a clear liquid that becomes jet black shortly after being opened, which apparently tastes like your average can of Coke with a touch of spice thrown in. But hey, not everybody likes cola. 
Maybe you're a maverick, a rebel. Only a soft drink with a formal title can quench your thirst. And as such, you prefer Dr. Pepper. In which case, maybe the vending machine will furnish you with an interdimensional Japanese product known as Dr. Pepper's Amusing Straw. This spatial huh. anomaly wrapped inside a whimsical Dr. Pepper branded straw seems to contain far more liquid than should be able to fit in the straw. About one bottle's worth of soda, to be precise. Oh, that's a nice wild. and convenient solution for whenever you need to get the fix that only an accredited doctor of popology can provide. And if you fancy something from the more intoxicating end of the beverage spectrum, for 600 yen, you can get yourself a rare bottle of Billy Beer. Billy it's Beer! It's just a thing for those who weren't alive during the Carter administration, but still want to try brew that was endorsed by the younger brother of President Jimmy Carter. This anomalous <laughs> bottle okay. of suds, which was bottled <laughs> in the 1970s according to its label, came with a note reading, I had this beer brewed just for me. I think it's the best I've ever tasted, and I've tasted a lot. I think you'd like it too. Billy Carter. Drinking the beer got a D-class intoxicated for 72 hours. How random. But what if you've just wet your whistle and worked up a hundred in the process? 72 hour intoxication Thankfully, off of a single SCP beer. Thankfully, SCP-261 has some delicious interdimensional food to satisfy your cravings. So for starters, how about a tube of the Little Bakery 7 Grain? This okay. small aluminum tube lets you squeeze out a blob of dough, which instantly rises and cooks itself into a tasty little loaf of bread. Oh, Testing okay, that's nice. Testing that the bread is a little chewy, but still tastes completely fine. Not bad for a tube to bake good. How about some seafood to go with that bread? Then maybe for your entree, you can crack open a delicious pack of lemon clams. And we do mean crack very literally here. If you crack this bag of anomalous clams like a glow stick, they boil themselves. And once you open them, you're ready to enjoy a serving of tasty clams that have a slight lemon flavoring to them. Delicious. But if you're not that hungry and just feeling more like a snack than a full fancy dinner, the machine once put out the Lay's Bloomin' Onion. While it appears to be a normal Lay's onion, Bloomin each onion. layer of the onion is a different flavor of chip. What? All the way into the middle. Truly a gourmet snack. With Get out of here, that'd be than, awesome. Well, actually exactly as many layers as an onion. And what about for those who are anomalously trapped in the year 2012 and are looking for a snack that is both tasty and meme worthy? Well, you'd be lucky to receive a 700 yen bacon shirt. A bacon it's exactly shirt! What it says on the can. An edible shirt that both smells and tastes like bacon, and has no real side effects other than making you smell a little like bacon while you're wearing it. Though this could be a dangerous anomalous effect if you decide to walk through your local dog park while you're wearing it. We've been told it pairs well with the meat hat, teriyaki fedora. The meat hat! A size 64 trilby teriyaki style fedora, fedora made entirely out of teriyaki flavored beef jerky. The object came flattened or box bearing the tagline, you can have your hat and eat it too. That's ridiculous. Which is a pun that probably makes a lot more sense. Meat clothes, that's ridiculous. Still a bit hungry? Well, lucky for- Although in the end, aren't our bodies just meat suits anyways? For you, this magical vending machine has got you covered on dessert too. For 700 yen, the foundation was given an entire edible chess set an with each of the ornate set. pieces carved from what seemed like hard Pez style candy. It's less checkmate and more check eight. Another pun that I promise is funnier in another dimension. And for 300 yen extra, you might walk away with a candy robot playset. These are more hard candy components that can be put together to create functional anomalous mini robots what? that move on their own, walking aimlessly and bumping into walls. But what oh, about the full- Could you imagine how successful a toy that would be if you, if you had a toy made of candy that could then be constructed into a working like robot toy. Oh my goodness, that would sell so fast. And not only would it sell, but then the kids would eat it and they'd have to buy another one. It's genius. Meal craving consumer on the go. Who wants both a dinner and a dessert combined into one disgusting package? Don't worry, the interdimensional vending machine has got you covered. Just 400 yen can net you some delicious turdako chakan. These Turdaco are balls chaken. of fried turkey filled with chocolate, a smaller ball of duck, more chocolate, and in the very center, a small ball of fried chicken. Even no. the labeling on the product describes it as having 450% of an adult human's daily recommended fat intake. I'm sorry, but I don't want chocolate inside 
my cooked meat. It's just, it doesn't sound good to me. We'll leave it to you to decide if this is a decadent treat worthy of the gods or utterly disgusting. Maybe you're feeling a little cheeky though, or you need the perfect comedic dessert for your bachelorette party. The vending machine has a candy direct from an alternate Korea, a tasty, if slightly too sweet, chocolate candy shaped like a certain male organ, filled with, we kid you not, liquid white chocolate. Perfect for anyone who has both the sweet tooth and the sense of humor of a 12-year-old. Okay, these were definitely all weird treats, but let's get really, really strange now. From the disgusting, to the confusing, to the inedible, to the straight up deadly. If you're a bit of a sadist, perhaps you're the kind of person who enjoys watching their snacks dying in front of them before they eat them. For that, the vending machine provides an aluminum box with a viewing window and a red button on top. Uh, Inside are a collection of small furry creatures, each with a single big eye. When the button is pressed, the creatures inside are abruptly superheated, cooking them all to death. At that point, the box opens and the creatures are ready to eat. We've been told they were crunchy, spicy, and tasted a little like beef. Maybe huh. you're part of the slow food movement. For that, we recommend the, the delicious slow pile food of slugs, movement. which is exactly what pile it sounds of slugs. like. This is a produce box, like the kind used for packing strawberries, except it's full of live slugs. There are both advantages and disadvantages to actually eating these slugs. The advantage is that they contain large amounts of vitamin C, E, and most of the B complex, which are all crucial to a healthy and balanced diet. The disadvantage is that they contain large amounts. Now, I know the normalcy of eating uh, slugs and insects and, and other things like that, um, arthropods and vermin and things of such a nature. I know changes mm, culturally. I know things are different and uh, more culturally accepted in different places. But I'm going to have to take a big pass on eating a box of slugs. Just, just going to... It's gonna pass on that one. Amounts of arsenic, which will kill you. And it's deadly. Though, of course, if you still have a candy flavored <clears throat> death wish, but you prefer your entomological treats a little more leggy, then may we interest you in a fine caramelized spider for a modest 500 yen. It's full of deadly quantities of an unknown anomalous venom that's pretty much impossible to cure, but it's worth it for the sweet sticky goodness that comes before <sighs> death sets in. Another strange item dispensed by the vending machine was a tall metal aluminum canister with a ring pole that, upon opening, had a violent chemical reaction with the air and triggered a large explosion. Apparently this particular beverage was never intended for oxygenated environments. The blast killed two researchers and resulted in the temporary suspension of testing. Though huh. in a slight silver lining for this fiasco, the testing area did smell of citrus for a few days, which the janitors must have enjoyed as they cleaned up all the body parts. Another dangerous snack provided by the vending machine was a long tube of chips called Prangles. Not to be Prangles. confused with any other long tube-based chips you may be thinking of. Prangles! the tube was opened, or <laughs> popped, as they say. The D-class that the chips were presented to began compulsively eating them. When I researchers mean, ordered the once you pop, you can't stop, stop. It seemed almost as if they couldn't. Regardless of the orders given to them, the D-Class just kept eating. Even when guards terminated the D-Class there and then, the corpse continued to eat chips out of the tube <laughs> until it was physically pried out of their hands. But if all those salty Prangles had really worked up a thirst mm, attack, gotta get perhaps me some Prangles. you can wash them down with a delicious can of Cherry Bomb. An intense oh cherry flavored drink explode? dispensed by SCP-261 for 450 yen. When a D-Class sampled this delicious soda, they commented on it tasting strongly of cherry. A few moments later, their head exploded with the force of a stick of dynamite, coating everyone and everything around it in gooey head viscera. The resulting cleanup took an arduous six hours, but wow, was that cherry tasty. And finally, why not complete this anomalous vending machine feast with a 1,000 yen paper mache pinata, resembling a dead horse that comes ready to use with a baseball bat? I don't know, man. The last time we saw pinatas in the SCP Foundation, they were uh, pretty dangerous. Everyone who saw the pinata fell compelled to beat it mercilessly with the bat until candy began to fall out. Many in attendance claim that it was the 1,000th gift unleashed by SCP-261, and thus warranted celebration. 
Once the dead horse was thoroughly beaten, all Cognito Hazardous properties ceased. There's a joke somewhere in there, but for the life of us, we're not sure we can find it. Oh well. Maybe it's in another dimension. All right, that was SCP-261, the pan-dimensional vending machine. You guys were right. It was very similar to, I think it was 294, the uh, teleporting coffee machine. Very similar, essentially a vending machine of some kind that pulls material from another place, whether that's another dimension or just somewhere else out in the universe. Um, but they are quite a bit different. It seems like this one, 261, the, the pan-dimensional vending machine, is a bit of a monkey's paw. You don't get to select what you get. You just put money in, and I'm assuming you hit a button combination, and it pops something out. I, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's repeatable. I mean, if you use, because I would think that it would be two things that determine what you get. One, the amount of currency that you put into the machine, and two, the button combination that you press after you put in the money. So, example, if you put in 10 yen or whatever, or 100 yen, and press 111, it'll probably spit something out. If you put in 1,000 yen and press 111, you'll probably get something different, I would assume. And if you want to hopefully hopefully it works this way, repeat that, then you would put in 100 yen again, and then put in 111, and get the first result again. Hopefully. But I don't know. They didn't really specify. Again, this is a bit of a monkey's paw. You don't really know what you're gonna get when it spits something out. It could be something absolutely delicious and harmless, or it could be lethal. It could literally make your head explode like a stick of dynamite. So if I had to choose one, I'm definitely gonna go with a coffee machine because while it does not dispense food and you can't get yourself a meal out of it, at least you kinda know what you're getting because you can actually specify what you want. You just have to kinda think about it before you write it in. Um, overall, Another cool SCP, very similar to the other one. You know, I wonder if these are kept in two separate facilities. Are these kept in two separate SCP facilities? Or eh, maybe they're in the same break room. Because <laughs> that'd be one heck of a break room, right? <laughs> another good SCP, another good suggestion from you guys. Really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button to see more content like it. And as always, guys, leave a comment down below. Let me know what other videos I should check out, what other SCP videos I should check out, or anything else you guys want me to see, leave it down in the comments. And as always, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. Take care of yourselves and have a great day.